look at your shirt, right? Find which questions you want to see you go over. Quattro. Wow. Quattro. What did I say? Four and five. Yeah. Oh, you did five. Yeah, I'm going to see if I'm right. Okay, so I see mostly fours, some fives, one. and then I see more threes than anything else. So we'll do three, four, and five. Well, four and five is what I'm going to do. It's not that hard. It is supposed to. That's what I did. Fine question. Okay, in this problem, Nick and his friends rented a canoe for three hours and paid $45. How much does it cost per hour to rent a canoe? So, we you know, three hours, he paid $45. We're looking for the cost per hour. They need some variable. Oh, I forget to do that. Oh. And then in your equation, we know he paid forty five dollars in total. He rented it for three hours, and we don't know how much each how much it costs each hour. So multiply three and x, and then divide both sides by three. So that each hour it costs fifteen dollars. Okay, but did I have to do all that? What if I do like 45 by 3? You need to set up an equation. It's a 45 We are in algebra. We have equations. You missed the one. 45 divided by 3 is an equation. No. Define an equation. That's just simplifying. Wait, so what's the, wait, def can you define what's an equation? I, I don't know how to speak. Uh, expressions with an equals is really it. Sounds so good. So, so 45 divided by 3 equals is an equation. With a variable that you're solving for. So you need a variable to have an equation. So what is it called without a variable? You're just simplifying expressions. Okay. Now what about in kindergarten when they just like this? You just more simplifying Try to say it as a non practical Alright, and number 4. No. Um, this one can be done in Desmos, but you could also use the graph. So if we plotted negative 4, negative 1. We don't have a graph. Can you guys not like that? Oh, no, I'm not on your paper. On the back of this, there is a graph. Oh, on the one on the side. Yes, okay. So if you plotted the point. Yeah, and you knew that the equation you're trying to find is parallel to this one. Parallel means the same slope, which would be 2. So you could make your slope from this point go up 2 to the right one as many times as possible. And so you hit your y-axis. Yeah, that's what I got. And then write your equation. y equals 2x plus x. Oh. Oh, she used it, right? That was the one from the one from the right I didn't know that. <laughs> In Desmos, if I put in the order pair, and then put in my y equals mx plus b, Add in your sliders. Add in all, Harry and Kay. I need you to stop talking, otherwise you're going back to your seat. Change your slope to be two. And then move this until it goes through that one. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe you got it. <laughs> 
And then that would be your equation, y equals 2x plus 7. So you could do that a bunch of different ways. Yes. yes. If you use Desmos, make sure you put uh, right, use Desmos. If you use the graph, make sure you put that you use the graph. Questions on that one before we do five? So if we make another equation, does it say that make another equation? Yes, so there was one that was given and we just made up one. So the y equals 2 equals 7 is your made up one? Yes. That's what I chose. And then to graph this, you could use Desmos to double check yourself. What was it? Y is greater than or equal to? What was the rest of that? Negative two x minus three. So it should start at negative three, have a slope of negative two x, be a solid line shaded above. So on your actual graph, it looks like. Is it a little bit? 
Not that one. So that one is the last informative. The last two will be formatives. Alright, and then quickly look at your course calendar. So there are a bunch of important dates. This is for the rest of the year. So there are four units that we're going to cover prior to the SOL. Remind, reminder that we're not testing until after the SOL. Previously, I sent out an email saying that we were going to test all four units, and then I would drop the lowest five grades. We are no longer testing all four units. We are only testing two of them, and I will drop one grade, the lowest one summative grade, because we need four summatives. It's the last day of school is just first period. So all of it. It's a half day. Their final exam is a final. It's a whole thing. Oh, period. So when does quarter four start? When does quarter four start? Yeah. Quarter three. The last day of quarter three is April eighth. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um. Notice that some of your dental masks. So the unit that we're starting today. All of the unit delta maps for this unit, unit 9, are formatives. <laughs> unit 10, 11, and 12 delta maps go back to being informatives. Did we do the gumbo? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, I did not put your JLab date up there, but that's going to be due. I think I will see you guys the day after the SOL, so the 16th, May 16th is when those are due for you guys. Your um, final exam date is up there for those that may need to take that. Your SOL date is up there. Your test dates are up there. Questions about any of those? So if you pass the SOL, you're exempt from the final. If you pass advance on the SOL, you get 100 in your final exam score. If you don't pass the SOL, you have to take the final. Mm -hmm. You can also choose to opt in to take the final if you want to boost your grade. But what if you don't pass it? Are you taking the final? If you don't pass the final? Yeah, even though you chose to go into it. Then your grade stays. So this unit is about factoring. I'll explain what that means here in a moment. There are different types of factoring. So there are only two objectives for this unit. But the first one, factoring, has a bunch of different ways to factor. So we'll be talking about all of those today. We'll talk about two different ways. Do you want to show them that? Oh, sorry, no. I don't know that one. It's a very fun. Okay. So, we're going to start by simplifying these. So, if I were to multiply a times everything here, what would this give me? 3a squared plus 7a. The next one, if I were to distribute the negative 2m to all three terms, what would that give us? Negative 2m negative 2 2m cubed minus 12m squared plus 2m. Negative 2m cubed minus 12m squared plus 2m. And then the last term, last one, multiply this to both terms. What would that give us? Four. Four. <coughs> X to the fifth. Y. Minus. Eight X to the third. Y squared. Your exponent rules, we need to keep practicing them, especially when we are using this method to check ourselves. So when multiplying like bases, add your exponents. 
So we're going to be given problems that look like this and have to convert it back into this. That's what our factoring is going to look like. So I'm going to have you write down this definition. Also write down these two things. So when we factor, we are separating a polynomial back into a product. If you want to turn that desk so you can see this, you can, if that's easier for you. I'm going to explain how we factor using GCF, greatest common factor, with this problem. When we look for a GCF, a greatest common factor, we're looking for what is the highest number I can divide out of all the terms. You may know that off the top of your head. But if you don't, you could list out the factors of each term. So what times what would give me four? Two. Okay. What else? One. <clears throat> and then what times what would give us eight? Four and two and one and eight. So of all your factors you're looking for, what is the highest number these both share? Two. Um, two. No, four. 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 <coughs> oh. So if uh, whatever the GCF is, whatever the highest number they both share, that's what you're going to divide out of both. But when we divide here, we're not actually getting rid of it. We're going to put it out front. And that's going to show our GCF that we factored it out. But then we also have to look at our variables. If they have variables in common, we look at the lowest exponent. Because this doesn't have two A's. I couldn't take two A's out of this one. But it does have at least one. So I can divide these both by one A, which is why four A is on the outside of the parentheses. You divide those, see what's left. 4a squared divided by 4a would give you this a, and then 4. And then 8a divided by 4a, just 2. So then whatever's left on the inside, you want that to be prime. So prime with factors are 1 times itself. It only has factors that are 1 in itself. Prime in this case is you can only divide out a 1. Nothing else could be divided out of it. Questions on how that works before we get into some others? Couldn't the 2 be divided by 2? Or do you think it has to be for everything? Like everything has to be able to be divided. You'd have to be able to divide everything. So if I can't divide this by 2 and it's say a whole number, I can't divide them both by 2. Okay. Other questions there? So let's try some of these. So if you need the steps, use them. Um, look for coefficient. Look at the coefficients of the terms first. Find the highest that we could divide out of those. That could be you listing out all the factors. If you know off the top of your head, that's also fine. Um, look at the variables. Look at the smallest exponent. Divide them both. Once we get in the habit of Factoring, we won't have to actually show that we're dividing. I'll show what that means. And then we can check our work. I didn't do this, so I'll do that real fast. If I were to multiply this back out, this would give me 4a squared plus 8a. So we want whatever that is, if we were to multiply it back out, to equal the original. If, you, if that works, then you need to do that right. Okay. So then in number one, is there something we could divide those both by? Three. So we divide this by three. What's up? One x plus four. And if I were to distribute that back, we get three x plus twelve, which is the original. So that works. What about two? 
And then it would be y minus 1. Divide them both by 7. And the first term is y, the second term is just negative 1. What about number 3? It is 4. If you're not sure, you could quickly list out all of your factors of 8 and 36. 8, you know, is 1 and 8, 2 and 4. What are factors of 36? 9 and 4, 6 and 6, 6 and 6, 2 and 8. There are some others. 4 and 36. And 1 more. And 1 more. So you could always list out your factors and then find the highest like that, but it is 4. But I'm going to show you what happens if, let's say we chose 2 instead of 4. So you could still do it with 4, but I'm going to show you what happens if we choose not the highest. So I know these are both even. Let's say I divide them both by 3. What would be left? So in this, that inside... I can see, I could divide 2 again, it's not prime, and if I were to divide that 2 again, that 2 comes out front. To show that I really should have divided everything by 4. So whether you do that at the beginning or the end doesn't matter as long as you get the right one eventually. That's two minus two is times. Other questions on that? Turn over to the next page. We're going to start to skip around. Number five, what would those have in common? Three. So I'm going to stop writing that I'm dividing up here, but you can continue to do that if you so choose. If we divide three out, what's left? Two a squared plus five. Do we have to show our division as showing our work? So if you wrote this, that'd be okay? Thank you. Now, once we get into more complex things, you may want to write it, but right now, this is okay. Um, let's do seven. What do those have in common? Three. Anything else? Six. So I can't divide 21 by six, so it's not a number. Three. Three and D. So if we're dividing both by 3D, what's left? 7C minus 1. Yes. If you divide by 3D. No, I mean, like, how do you know to do 3D? How do we know to do that? Because 3, we can divide both of these by 3, but also if we can both have a D. That's when you divide the 3 and the 21, does that also take out the 2? Say that one more time. So when you divide 3 and the 21, that's when you take out the 3D and the 21D. So the 21 divided by 3 gives us the 7. The, this would really be 1 minus 1, which would be 0. So the Ds would cancel, just leaving the C. So there's a lot of exponent rules at play here. Um, let's do 9. What do those have in common? 15. Anything else? 3. We do have a B. We do have an A. How many of each? 2 A's and 1 A. Could I take 2 A's from this 1 A? I don't know. No. So just 1, both. 1 for both. Divide both terms by 15 A, B.
What would that leave us with? A minus two. And that's it. Any questions, confusion so far? Where did the exponent go on 9? This? Yeah. So if you divide this by 15, AB was 2 minus 1. 1. 1. Okay. Oh, okay. So remember, I'm not writing the division piece. If it helps you see it more clearly, see where the exponents are being subtracted, do that. Um, 12. What do those have in common? One x and one y. We divide that out of both pieces. What's left? X plus three. X plus three on the inside. What about thirteen? It's already prime. Yes. There's nothing we could divide out except for one, which means it's already prime. There's nothing else we can do there. Now, as you're factoring, you may forget how to factor some of the other methods and think it's prime, but that may not be the case, so keep that in mind. Okay, 14. Three. Three works, I think there's something higher. Six. Six. And then what variables and how many of each? A. To the power of one, B power one, C power two. Yes. Right. So yes. six, one A, one B, C squared. Divide those both. What would be left? Three, A So, when you get more variables with more exponents, take it one step at a time. These are very easy to miss an exponent, miss a variable, because we're going too fast. So, don't feel like you have to go fast. Um, 16. What do those have in common? Can we divide them all by 9? 3. Any variables? R. R. Just one R? Yeah, you can do two. Yeah. Because then there's oh, no, there one. This is a trick question. Just one R. Any S's? Yeah. So three R. Divide each piece by three R. What's left? Three R so that looks like we should do more with it, but if we really look at it, only two of these things can be divided by three, two of these things can be divided by two, two of them have R's, two of them have S's, so nothing has something in common of all of them. So that is prime, that is our final answer. Questions on that one. Let's do 18. All I know is that they can all be multiplied by a squared and b squared. 6 a squared b squared. Yes. 6 a squared b squared. We're going to divide each piece by 6a squared b squared. I'm going to rewrite this actually. So if there's two of each of them, like for the b2 and the other b2, would it be zero or would it just be one? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be b to the zero would be just one. So then you wouldn't put bl. Okay. 
Alright, so to take this one step at a time, divide the first part, what would that give us? 2, two a cubed uh, minus, three inches, sorry. Mm -hmm. Double check that. 6 a squared. 6 a squared. Do we have any b's there? Mm -hmm. 1b. And the last term? Minus this is minus 1. So double check your math. Double check your exponent math. Do you have any questions so far? Are there any of the remaining ones, 19 through 24, that we want to see? Do you go over and have questions about? Twenty in the month, we're going to change here. So for number eight, what do those two have in common? What could we divide out? Two. 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 What else? Two. So not number wise, two, two yes. H and H. If we divide two H out of both, what's left? Seven G minus nine. Seven G minus nine. Yes, that's it. And then number 20. 6XYZ. 6, yes. 1X. Do they all have a Y? No. 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 So, and then 1Z, yes. 6XZ. And if we divide that from each term, what's left? That is true. So, no x. Let's go back and change that. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. I missed that. So, z. So, just 6 d. Yes. So, 3 x to the second power y or negative 2 plus x z plus 6. What else is still there? Y z squared. So 6z, 3x squared y minus 4xz plus 6yz squared. Yes, nice. From this one, if we divided 6z, 18 divided by 6 would give us 3. Oh. There are no x's, and the z's would cancel, leaving the y. Other questions? So, factoring by GCF is like the second easiest way to factor of all of your factoring methods. The first is what we're going to do next. Go to this page. So we're going to do a warm up first and then talk about how to do the process and then jump into some of these, then how to have practice. So if we were multiplying this, we have a binomial times a binomial, two terms times two terms. So multiply by box method, double distributive, foil, any of those. X times X would give us. X squared. X times negative 4. Negative 4x. Four, 4 times x. Positive 4x. Four and then 4 times negative 4. Negative 6. If we combine those like terms, what happens? 
the x's cancel out? Correct. So we get x squared minus 16. Do the same thing for the next one. 5m times 5m. 5m squared. 5m times negative 1. Negative 5m. 1 times 5m. Positive 5m. And 1 times negative 1. Combine the like terms, what would our final result be? 25m squared minus 1. And then the last one, 2a times 2a. 4a squared. 4a squared. 2a times negative 3b. Negative 6ab. Negative 6ab. 3b times 2a. Positive 6ab. Positive 6ab. And then 3b times negative 3b. Negative 5 squared. So when we combine all the terms, that final answer would be 4a squared minus 9b squared. So we're going to be getting um, the difference of squares here and have to rewrite it into this format, just like our GCF. But there are, there's a specific way to do it. One, make sure that you actually have a difference of squares, not that uh, you're adding, because then it wouldn't work the same. If you have a difference of squares and it's in this format, you're going to have two sets of parentheses. And you're looking for what times what would give you a squared a times a, you're going to put that first. Put the a in both sets. What times what will give you b squared? Plus and b. b and b. And then you're going to put a plus in one and a minus in the other. It does not matter which one. And then if you want to double check yourself, you could distribute it. So a times a would give us a squared. a times negative b, negative a b. B times A, positive AB, B times negative B, negative B squared. If we cancel our like terms, we get the original. So you could use that as a way to check yourself. But we are looking for the answer that looks like this. So we're going to try out some of these. Wait, what's the multiplication rate the A times A, B times A? Oh, okay. Okay. Alright, so in number one, we are subtracting. We do have a difference of squares. Really because these are perfect square terms. So what times what will give us A squared? A times A. And then ignore the minus. What times what will give us 4? 2 times 2. Put a plus in one and a minus in the other. That's your answer. That's it. It doesn't matter where you put the minus. It does not matter. Questions about that? So these are so easy to the test is going to be so different. Not really. Yes. So let's say like 81 squares. You have to put 81 squares. The number. But yes, yeah, so let's do that one. So what times what will give us a one? Nine. What times what will give us x squared? X put a plus, put a minus. So whatever order it's originally in, if the variable comes first, the variable has to come first in your answer. If the number is first, the number has to come first in your answer. Um, can we use five? Does 5 look like the rest of these? No. It's addition. Because of that, this is a plus sign. You can't have a plus sign. Oh! It's already in its most simplified form. We cannot factor it more. Let's try 7. So I'm going to ask, what would those factors be? You're going to answer what goes inside here. Three, three, 
any of these so far. Okay. How would you do six? What can you do for one? What template will give us one? One. 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 So that's going to be one and one. Okay. So plus, what would the rest of that factor be? Seven. 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 Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Yes. And then minus seven. Yes. Any others on this page we want to see?
we could figure out what it is, but to check yourself, put those two numbers in with a comma in between, hit enter, and it will tell you what that ACF GCD is. So if you're not sure, want to double check yourself, please use that. So if I divide these both by two, what's left? And then can we do anything else with what's on the inside? Hmm. We can't divide it by a GCF, but could we do difference of square? We can take the difference of squares, yes. Which would make that what two factors? So each of these, any problems you get, it may not say check for GCF first. So check that first. If you can't do a GCF, then go difference of squares if it's only two terms. But if you can do the GCF, deal with that first. So what does it have to be a two on what So like with our GCF stuff, whatever the GCF was, it was on the outside. We can't lose that because it's part of the problem. Oh, okay. Okay, let's try 23. Find the GCF of that. So those of you looking at me should either be putting this in your calculator or writing down all the factors. So these are two. Do they have anything else in common? Well, two and two on one showed up. Number wise, yes. Variable wise. Oh, no. No. So if we divide divide them both by two, what's left? Six, six, and nine. Can we do anything else with that? Yes. What? Uh, do the difference of squares. Difference of squares. So what would those two factors look like? Four uh, S plus three U and then four S minus If you see odd powers with exponents, that should tell you there's a GCF and your variable might be one of them, part of that. What others would we want to see? Do you go over and have questions about? Mm -hmm. Oh, did you have a question? What's that? Okay. What would be our first step? Dividing it by M and N because it has a GTF. After dividing that, what's left? Minus one. Can we do anything else with that? Yes, what? Difference of squares. So that would be what two factors? M plus one and M minus one. Make sure the order is in the correct uh, order. Other questions from the state? I don't think this is the case right now, but later when we get into more complex ones, you might see something where you have a GCF. I keep trying to make one up. Um, let's say you get something like and we split that up. What would those new factors be? Now, 
normally we stop that there. But could we, couldn't we do this one again? Yes. So if you see something like this, you have three factors instead of just two. This one just gets brought down. So this one would be what if we broke that down? So factor it down completely until it can't be factored anymore. By DCF, by difference of squares, later when we get into other factoring methods, by those. Okay. Why would you just leave the other one as minus for Because we can't use difference of squares here because it's adding. So there's nothing we can do with it. Yeah. Also, I don't know if we're going to go into this, but what do we do if the exponent is, uh, is an odd number? So we could do one of those if you choose one. I didn't see any. So there's a lot. And we did. 26. I'm at 29. There are two also had an had an odd power, but we factored it out. Can you do the DCF? Do difference of squares, though, if you saw. Not right away. You have to factor out the DCF first. Yes, it does. I cannot use difference of squares here because while 36 and 9 are perfect squares, these are odd powers. Which means I'd have to take out the GCM first. Yes. So if you have like three m cubed minus b squared, so that wouldn't work because you have to take out the GCM. I don't. I can't come up with one. Okay. If you have an odd power, you have to take out the GCM first. Difference of squares only works if your exponent is uh, even. So then for the remainder of class, you could be working on a bunch of different practice things. Your delta math test due on Friday, that's formative on what we just learned. Notes, practice, your SOL practice, your J labs, any of those you could be working on. So make sure you are using this time wisely and doing that.